annealing brass. There's many ways to anneal brass. Some people just use a drill in an open flame. They set the drill over the flame and they spin it until the brass glows at the exact point that they want and they change the brass, it's into another one and that's annealing. Some people use induction machines that are worth two plus thousand dollars depending on what attachments you have with them. For me, the reason I chose the ugly annealer is firstly it works really well and you'll see it in action shortly. Number two, I couldn't make this machine for what it sells for. This machine's $2.99. It comes with all the calibers and it works perfectly. As long as you know what you're doing, and by the end of this segment, you will um, know exactly how to anneal your brass. It works it's fantastic, absolutely amazing. Now, why do we anneal brass? First reason is longevity of brass. When you fire a piece of brass and it's a bullet, the neck expands. We resize it, so put another bullet. We fire it again, it opens up again. So what happens if you get a piece of metal and you put it in a vise and you bend it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards? Where it's bending, it's gonna go hard and it's gonna snap. Many people have had metal in a vise bending a bang and a bang, back snaps. Same sort's gonna happen here. By annealing the brass, we're going to get this glowing just, just starting to glow. And then we're going to let it cool down again. And what that's going to do is put the brass back to its original form. And what that's going to allow us to do is keep using this brass for a lot longer than if we didn't anneal it. Now, there's another reason as well. Whilst we're putting it back to its natural form, we're also maintaining neck tension, which is the amount of pressure that this case is going to have on the projectile. Now, everything that you will hear on this video will be about consistency. And if you want to shoot well and you want to have small groups, consistency is key. Let me show you how we anneal some brass. So here we are almost set up now. As I said before, the brass that's in the machine at the moment is not the brass that I use. This is what I call my rubbish brass. It was either trimmed too short or something happened whilst it was trimmed and it was damaged or the brass was too short for my liking. That all goes in a brass bin and it's used for situations like this where I need to test something before uh, damaging my own good brass. The very first thing we're going to do is turn on the torch and we're going to see where exactly the flame is hitting the brass. It has to be exactly on the neck. And once that's done, we're going to turn off the lights and we're going to test to see when, how long it glows for and if it glows and I'll be showing you how I control it. That was a little too deep, so I'm just going to adjust it out a little bit. Let's try that again. Still a little bit too far in for my liking. Hopefully third time looking. Yep. Look at it from both angles. That's perfect. And that's why we use rubbish brass, because that brass would be raw now. So I'm just going to get rid of that and chuck it in there. And now what we're going to do is turn all the lights off and test it in the dark. And I'll be adjusting it in the dark um, so I can get the exact, exact timing. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we go. Okay, so the torch is on. I'm about to turn off the uh, main lights in here and I'll talk you through the process as it's happening. Okay, so I'm going to turn the machine on now. So we'll start turning. And a piece of glass is just about to drop. There it goes. And it's in the flame. 
and it's heating up, heating up, heating up, and that's too hot, way too hot. So we're going to speed that up a little bit. I'm going to speed that a fair bit actually. So that's not what we want. So I've increased the speed a fair bit, and it's still way too hot. So I'm going to speed it up a lot more than that. And that's the point that we need to let it go, so we're just going to go a little bit faster than that. Oh, I reckon just a touch more. Yep, that was pretty good. So, oh, just long. Perfect. I reckon even a little bit more. I like it just to start glowing red, which is roughly that 400 degree mark. It's got to be rose red, not red red. And rose red, perfect. So you can see these first ones, they got really hot. And I'm talking about really hot. Sorry, the sensor went out. See how the heat traveled down to here. And as we started adjusting it, that's the heat mark right there. That's exactly where we want to be. That heat mark right there is absolute perfection. Now let's get some brass annealed. And now we just sit back and get mesmerized. Now here's the reason I do it in the dark. Did you see that glow? No, I don't get out. Which tells you you can't see it when there's a lot of light. That's why you've got to do it in the back. Back to the back again, and you can see it grow. Yeah. And just like that, our lucky last. There you go. You've now completed your second part to reloading and that's annealing the brass. It's not that hard, but it's very important to test on rubbish brass or sacrifice five, 10 rounds, let it cool right down, try it again until you get it right before you put your good brass in. And there you have it, a great result. See you in the next video and I'll teach you all about length sizing.